Hello, I'm Elizabeth Ashley, the secret healer. Welcome to a very windy Shropshire today. Today's video is, what is rose essential oil used for? And because it's so blowy, I'm gonna take you now into the secret healer's shed. My name is Elizabeth Ashley, the secret healer. Welcome to my channel, List of Essential Oils and Their Uses. And today we're talking about what is rose essential oil used for? That lovely little bottle. Now it's part of a series of videos I've done about rose essential oil benefits because I am an author of 20 essential oil manuals, in, including pertinently this one, Rose Goddess Medicine, and this one, Skin Care for Dry Skin. And Rose contributes, obviously, greatly to both. So this is a very short overview here. And then if you go down to the description, there are videos that go much more in depth. So this is for a beginner. If you decided that you are actually above what you already know, that I already tell, because you know I can sell it in a snapshot, and you want to go more deeply into things like clinical evidence, more interesting stuff, then look in the uh, in the description for what does rose essential oil do. So we're going to go more scientific, not just what do we use it for, but how does it do it. Um, and then lastly. If you are here for the skincare, and why would you not be? Rose essential oil benefits for skin. We're going to talk a little bit about skincare in this video, but that one we're going to talk about how we use the rose essential oil. What do we do to really make our skin look beautiful? So first of all, rose essential oil, where does it come from? Well, as you can see, I've got several lovely, oil, uh, lovely um, roses. <laughs> Look at those. I've just picked those in the garden. So I have to be careful not to drop this on my computer. <laughs> we could, wouldn't it? So as we go through, we can see they're all different colours, all different fragrances. Hmm. <laughs> Which one do you think the oil would be made from? Red one, maybe? Orange one, white one? Well, or maybe you think actually it doesn't matter. A rose is a rose is a rose. Well. To a certain extent that's true but the rose essential oil comes from this is not exactly it but it looks very much like it the rosa damascena this one's called sister elizabeth actually bought for me by my sister and my obviously i am elizabeth and uh it's pink and it's very dainty and actually it does smell very much like the real one as well very very dainty so it's pink it's not the red rose that we all think of to do with love and passion so that's interesting we're not thinking about deep red passionate sex we're talking about pink soft powdery gentle transmission of love love is the thing rather than the passion rather than the sex it's the love but having said that it's very aphrodisiac We'll talk about that in a minute. So first of all, let's think about the skincare because who that's where everybody starts with rose oil and it's the right thing to do because it brings about this beautiful nourishment to the skin. And as I say, in the other video with the link down below about skincare, we're going to talk about how to use it. But what I can tell you is um, its active ingredient means that it um, acts on what's called the um, keratinocytes which are the formulative cells of your skin. Plenty of clinical evidence to support this. I'm just going to get high. Forget talking to you, I'm just going to get high. <laughs> so if you think about how the skin's um, constructed, it's in many different layers. So you've got the epidermis and then we've got right down at the bottom, we've got the granular layer. Lots of subcutaneous fat here to feed them. But the granular layer, the cells are born, they come up. They're fed in the subcutaneous uh, um, layer. Fat get uh, get fat babies. 
and then they come up to the surface. Now, what's interesting is most of the surface of your skin is dead skill, dead um, cells by the time I get here. So when in the other video, we'll look at sloughing those off to get the very best effect for your skin. But the keratinocytes come up and of course they're all young. So they're translucent and thin and healthy and flushed. You know, see that lovely blush effect that you get, that is from all the lovely healthiness that the rose has put into the keratinocytes. So that skincare, what we'll talk about, um, again, we'll talk about it more, but specifically, you are looking to use rose for um, dry skin or normal skin. If it's really dry, we're going more um, frankincense or maybe vetiver. If you've got combination skin, rose and your lang, -lang to calm down that T-square. And as I say, look in the other video, we'll go into that much more deeply. But for skincare, beautiful. Um, just to clarify a couple of points that come up on the internet, I see a lot, is they'll tell, there's lots of pages that will tell you vitamin, um, it's full of vitamin C. So lemon essential is full of vitamin C. Rose essential oil is vitamin C. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> it's not. Um, essential oils can't pass through, uh, sorry, no wrong. Vitamins can't pass through um, distillation. They're water-based and lipid based, which don't actually cross the distillation, they're left behind. So if you do want to put vitamin C on your skin, well, who wouldn't? It really makes a big difference to nourishing it and also bringing um, youthful cells to the surface. There is vitamin C in the plant of the rose and you find it in the rose hip. So if you're looking for rose hip carrier oil, there's your vitamin C and again, Look in the other video for that. Emotionally, it's a very powerful essential oil, um, specifically for grief, uh, for sadness, for love generally. You know, it operates on the heart chakra. So there's, there's uh, well, there's many, many chakras, but we talk about seven main chakras from the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the brow, and the crown chakra. Now, all our evidence shows that it activates and supports the heart chakra. So um, emotionally, we talk about how that is love and emotions and grief and sadness, but joy in particular. But the chakras go through the etheric body, bodies, the aura, right through, and they permeate through the physical body like a cone, like that. So they go big, small through the organs, small, big, out, sending messages from the spirit and the emotions uh, from the aura into the physical body. So we also know then that the heart chakra has an, um, a physical component to it. So anything to do with the uh, problems in the heart chakra will um, show themselves in problems in the chest. So heart complaints circulation, lungs, uh, respiratory problems, and again, we will see sadness and grief. So then we can talk about how rose is extremely good for circulation. It wouldn't be the first oil we would go for. If it were me, I would go for black pepper or um, geranium. But in terms of supporting the heart, if we've got heart problems, Beautiful, really beautiful, because not only that, but it calms the emotions that go with the heart. Specifically, as I say, I have written a book called Rose Goddess Medicine, and I'll uh, put details below as to how you can find that. But um, I talk in there about a fantastic clinical trial, albeit it was about mice. So that's <laughs> one of my things to tell you that it's not about people but it would that we suspect it would have the same effect on people that it stopped mice fighting it seems to have an anti-conflict um part of it so again we're going to this calming harmonious love again aren't we and as i as i video this not only am i in coronavirus lockdown but um i'm watching these horrific riots 
for George Floyd and just the anger that's coming out of it all. And Rose would be a perfect elixir for the rage that people are feeling, you know, and rightful rage, I should say. I'm not surprised the world is furious about this. But if you were to look at a way to appease it, well, the gardens are full of roses. Beautiful. Um, so you might have seen these cards before. These are my Tongue of the Trees cards. And as you can see, for love. So let me tell you a little bit about the poem in the book that goes with it. It says, standing by the graveside or sobbing into your pillow, I know your pain. On the days when you feel lonely, worried or sad, I know your pain. Through the nights where sleep seems so far away and you feel like you might break. Amidst the anger, the confusion and desolation, I feel your pain. For I was there, remember, when you smelled the roses of their love. And your fingertips stroked my petals and tried to avoid the prick of thorn. I felt your hopes, your fears, your joy of deep connection. I ensnared it in my scent to help conjure that affection. In my fragrance, remember hope. Let my aroma you complete. May scent of celebration heal you, calm you and help you sleep for through me you're never alone always loved and open to give and receive more smell me open up and feel safe to love once more so yeah the the, the bit about the dreaming and the pillow and the sleeping is because the clinical trials show that it has an action which we call hypnotic that is it makes you kind of mesmerised, trance-like and really makes you sleep more deeply and go to sleep ease, more easily. But also that whole conversation that the plant has with you, if you draw this card, reminds you about the interaction the brain has with fragrance. Now, I wasn't going to talk about this, but interesting that it's Rose Goddess Medicine. I'm writing a piece at the moment for a journal about how I feel that God is in the fragrance, that God lives in fragrances and the, um, the goddesses used to be called down by incenses. We use incense in the churches still, but also in that fragrance is memories, isn't it? The second that you smell, you go, oh, what's that remind me of? Well, that really reminds me of something. And when you're reminded, you're taken back there. So it's a bit like when in the treatment of, tra of, of trauma and PTSD, how there are many different therapies now that work with exposure, exposing you to the memory, the problem, the trauma that took place in a safe and um, calm environment where you are separated from it. It's one of the main oils that were used for um, PTSD. You might be interested in some of my Essential Oils for Mental Health series where we talk about rose a lot of the different aspects. But this whole idea of going back to a place, remembering that your neurotransmitters are not behaving in the same way as they did at the time. They're not furious at the betrayal. They're not running wild with dopamine and passion because my god i can't eat because he's so beautiful you know it's just the memory and what's very interesting is that memory exists within a part of the brain called the limbic system it's a very primitive and ancient part of the brain possibly part of the first part of the brain that ever formed and we know that rose in particular activates on um, the amygdala, the hypothalamus, the pituitary, the, uh, the adrenals, what's called the HPA axis. And when you inhale rose, what it does is stops that HPA axis from firing. It prevents a thing called cortisol being released. Cortisol is a stress hormone. Cortisol in its own right, 
I'm a big advocate of cortisol because everybody makes cortisol sound like the baddie and I'm going to wave the flag for it and say actually in its own right it's anti-inflammatory um, and we secrete it when we're, we're stressed you know so it's a CRF cortisol release factor the part that triggers it is now known to be the hormone the molecule of negative expectation so the second that you expect something bad's going to happen you start the crf is released and then cortisol starts to flush the system now as i say to begin with that's great because it's in response to stress it's to say right okay jump up into the tree away from that saber-toothed tiger but after a while if you're not careful in a long-term stress situation, you can't stop thinking that saber-toothed tiger is there. And because your body is flushed with this cortisol continually, 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 the, parasymp the sympathetic system cannot be switched off by the parasympathetic system, which is in effect rest and restore, what makes you go to sleep, which what stops your eyes being dil uh, dilated, calms your breath, calms your heart, can't happen because it cannot secrete uh, kick into touch when all of this cortisol is in the body so breathing the essential oil breathing the rose calms the cortisol release so immediately we've got a um a way in to things like ptsd trauma memory memory in particular um, memory is an interesting one because, and I'm kind of going more technical than I wanted to in this video, but I'm so passionate about it, I can't stop. Um, we know that it, as I say, it works on the uh, amygdala, um, hypothalamus, pituitary adrenal, particularly on the hypothalamus. Now, what's interesting about the hypothalamus is the cells have a certain degree of plasticity. So what that means is they can regenerate, right? So if we, and rose will cause that to happen, you get this regeneration of um, cells within the um, hypothalamus, which is also early stages dementia. It looks like it may be able to calm down the problems with memory in those early days because it encourages the cells to regenerate early stage very early stage research as well so i'm going to go back to my cards in a minute see if we can get back on track because i've gone off <laughs> so here we go and at the bottom of the tongue of the trees cards as i say i wrote these i did not do how beautiful this is this is all the work of somebody called gergle Halodi, who is my business partner a hungarian aromatherapist but at the bottom, you can't see it on there, I'll read it to you, are some details that tell us even more about the oil. So for the start off, it tells us that it's the middle note for blending. We also call that the heart note. So if you mix it with some top notes and some bass notes, you get a beautiful blend. Incidentally, if you have a look on the, my, the, in the links, you'll also see a link to the Tongue of the Trees channel, which is to do with these and we go much more deeply into how to use the essential oils for safety and stuff like that but we do a big settle a set on blending now it's ruled in chinese medicine by water what does that mean well water is the emotions the thoughts the feelings that go on the uh, subconscious urgings that take us by surprise override the conscious mind really and uh yeah going into those dark spaces the thorn you know we should talk about the thorn really we all have those thorns don't we that are deep in the issues in the tissues that's i it just hurt me so much but i knew i'd got to get past it and so i didn't really deal with, deal with it i moved forward i had to smile i needed to smile the kids needed me couldn't just wallow Mm, okay yeah you're right in everything that you've done but i'm telling you now that thorn is festering if you found your if you are 
suffering from depression, suffering from anxiety, suffering from PTSD, suffering from grief. It's that thorn. The rose knows about thorns. It really does. That's how it heals. Um, so we've talked about how it's the heart chakra. It's ruled by Venus. Now, I'm going to cursory say this, but if you go to the other video, the, the more deeply one, I won't be able to stop. But Venus is the planet, which is love, and all things beautiful, all things luxurious. So it rules things like money, <laughs> um, but also looking good, chocolate, champagne, all of that stuff. It all goes with roses, doesn't it? But um, Venus is to do, again, with love. It's just one word, but a huge concept within our lives, isn't it? And um, I am a, a, um, a religion scholar. Right? That's what I um, uh, did, I did my qualifications in. Um, and so I studied Old Testament um the, uh, uh, archaeology but also some theology of the Gnostic Gospels in the um, the New Testament and one of the things we had to learn about was the different types of love there were and how they differed so you can say to somebody I, I love you but it means different things in different situations doesn't it so like the love that you have for your husband is different to the love that you have for your children which is different again for the love that you have with your brothers and sisters probably you don't argue with anybody else as much as you do with those it's a whole different kind of love isn't it and then it's different again for the love of your parents for the love of your friends for the love of your colleagues and the love of the world at, at, at large you know they're all different types of love but at every single level rose will help um and so just a very um, quick conversation about gynecology. As I say, well, the book that I've written is called Rose Goddess Medicine and it's entirely a female oil. It has tremendous actions on male sexuality and we talk about that in the other video, but it is feminine. Um, you know, it's, it's just romantic and pretty. You know, the fact that they're sitting behind me, they're very, very romantic, aren't they? But... Um, it's tremendous for hormones generally. So if you are su suffering with PMT or PMS, rose is lovely. I would blend it with lavender, uh, lavender and clary sage to get rid of those period pains, but also to calm the emotions that go with it. Clary sage is also very good if you're bloated, incidentally. Um, and if you are menopausal, how it works pre-menopausal and post-menopausal is different but um they both make you feel better and again i'll talk about more, more more deeply in the other video um but how if you no i can't let it go <laughs> menopause definitely rose always rose um if you are post-menopausal or menopausal um then again we use uh, clary sage and this really helps with the emotions that go with feeling older but also um tremendous for um things like osteoporosis breathing the essential oil is proven to improve levels of oxytocin oxytocin is what keeps our bones strong apart from anything else it does lots of things but also bone strong uh, bone strength comes from lots of different things but if your oxytocin has dropped which it does after menopause your bones get weaker breathing essential oils for five minutes has been proven to improve levels of oxytocin and what else does oxytocin do? Lots and lots of different things, but it's the bonding molecule. So, you know that afterglow, after you've had tremendous sex and you just go, I don't want them to go anywhere. That's your oxytocin, right? That's it, flushing your body. And when you, it's what makes your contractions happen when you're having a baby. It's that lovely bonding um, 
molecule that hopefully you have when the baby's born just you know just want to hold it not everybody is that lucky but if you are then it's oxytocin oxytocin also think about how you cuddle baby and or you watch something really emotional get really upset or feel this rush of love what happens oh my goodness where's the breast pads because oxytocin brings the, uh, the milk into your breasts Floods all over your best silk dress in front of a load of blokes. <laughs> Thanks, oxytocin. <laughs> Next time I won't breathe my, my, my essential oils before I go out to a great big conference full of men. <laughs> but essential oils will do that on every possible level. Inhalation will do that. But rose in particular really heals the thorn it stabilizes the emotions it stabilizes your hormones um and i've gone off what i wanted to say if you are perimenopausal yes we want to use the rose but we don't use clary sage we use chaste berry vitex agnus castus so if you get nothing from this video you got that <laughs> to be able to get to it so let's have a quick recap then so Emotions, skin, sleep, memory, stress, sex. That's it, isn't it? So, as I say, in the other video, we'll go much more deeply. Now, I just want to say before I go that in the links, we have lots of um, bits and pieces. I'll tell you how to get these cards. These are the Tongue of the Trees cards. I'll show you the page on my website that tells you how to get my books. Um, but at this point, I would like to say thanks for watching me because I know I can ramble on. I've got too much knowledge in my head that just comes spilling out. As soon as I smell an oil, it goes, da -da 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 -da, what are you supposed to know? <laughs> and it all comes out. Um, and I, But I really would love it if you would write some comments below tell people a little bit about your experiences with rose essential oil have you used it or another thought i would like you to uh, to think about find an essential oil any essential oil any fragrance whether that's coffee i'm going to ask you a question god lives in the fragrance what does that mean to you how do you feel about that statement Put it in the comments like and subscribe and uh, yeah watch the other videos and i will see you so soon you get your phone you turn it this way up and then there's a little red subscribe button turn it gray by clicking it and then there's a little bell click that and press all at the bottom of your phone or tablet computer it will say you will receive all notifications and then there's a little hand with a thumbs up click that it'll turn it blue and it says add it to your liked videos and there will be comments and if you want to you can send a comment or, and say like hi to mum and dad like and then the link to the next video will be in the description below underneath the video. So, bye!